Hello, everyone. And today I'll present proofs of proof of stake with sublinear complexity. This is a joint work with Joachim Nye, Ertan Nusrat-Tas, and Diana Sisenders. Let's say Bob wants to connect to the Ethereum network and he wants to know if he owns a certain NFT, let's say Bored Ape. For this, the most secure way for him to do this would be to run his own full node. The full node would connect to multiple other full nodes in the network and try to sync to the latest state of the network. As long as the full node connects to one other honest full node, it will successfully sync. Once the full node has synced, Bob can simply query the full node. Unfortunately, this takes more than five days and requires over 500 gigabytes of storage for Ethereum. So most Ethereum users today simply outsource this work of running full node to third-party providers such as Infura. And then they can simply run a very lightweight wallet in their browser or smartphone, which simply trusts this third-party provider to give the correct state of the network. But what happens if this third-party provider turns malicious or is compromised? Currently, the wallets will simply show the incorrect state to the user. This creates a huge central point of failure for all the existing Ethereum users currently. Not only that, it is a huge liability for the RPC provider as if it is compromised, all of its users are also immediately compromised. This creates a dilemma for the users between security and performance. In the later part of the presentation, we will go over constructions which are both efficient while still being secure. Before we actually look into such constructions, let's do a quick recap of Ethereum's consensus. Ethereum uses a fairly complicated proof of stake consensus based on Casper FFG. But for the sake of this presentation, we'll only have a very high level view of the consensus. In Ethereum, the full nodes have to lock a certain amount of ethers in the network to participate in the consensus. These full nodes are also referred to as validators. The time is divided into slots and validators are chosen randomly proportional to their stakes to propose a block in a particular slot. If you think about any client who wants to verify a certain block, he needs to know the block proposer for that particular slot. And to know the block proposer, he needs to know the stake distribution table of the validators and the randomness used to select the validators from the stakes. Uh, currently, Ethereum has over 100,000 validators and the stakes of each validator is also continuously changing. So it is not possible for a client to efficiently keep track of the stake distribution table. For this, to circumvent this problem, Ethereum proposes sync protocol. In sync protocol, the time is divided into bigger chunks of period of around one day, referred to as sync period. And the original validator set is sampled into a smaller committee of size 512, referred to as sync committee. The sync committee has two responsibilities. First, the sync committee should sign every block in its period. And second, the sync committee should sign the next sync committee and so on. And the next sync committee again signs every block in its period and the next sync committee. Also, whenever we will use the signatures of the sync committee, we will always take a quorum over these signatures. So now let's use the sync protocol to sort of construct a more efficient uh, client construction. So let's say Bob now knows the Genesis sync committee. Bob can connect to any full node and ask the full node to provide signatures from the Genesis sync committee on the first sync committee, and then provide the signatures from the first to the second, and so on, until it reaches to the latest sync committee. Once it has reached the latest sync committee, it can simply ask for the signatures of the latest committee on the latest block. 
And mm -hmm. once it knows the latest block, as we know that the state of Ethereum is stored as a Merkle root, it can simply ask the interested state with a Merkle inclusion proof. This allows Bob to sort of linearly verify the signatures and then quickly just do a Merkle inclusion proof to check you know, the correctness of the interested state. Unfortunately, this still takes around 100 megabytes of storage for a chain size of 10 years. One thing to note here though is once you know the latest sync committee, you can simply verify any interested state. Because once you know the sync committee, you can ask the signatures to the latest block and then ask for a Merkle inclusion proof. So from now on, we will only bother about finding the latest sync committee. So let's do a quick recap of, so this construction is the light client construction and the communication complexity of this construction is the sync committee size and the number of sync periods plus the Merkle inclusion proof. Now let's look at a straw man construction. So Bob now connects to two full nodes. Uh, we will also call these full nodes as provers and Bob as the verifiers. Now we assume that at least one of them is honest. So if both of them are honest, Bob can simply ask the latest committee to both the provers and they will say the same thing and he can trust either of them. But let's say you know they disagree in which case one of them must be malicious. In that scenario, Bob can simply ask both the committees to hash each committee and generate a list of committee hashes. Now, Bob can linearly check each committee provided by both the provers one at a time until he reaches the first point of disagreement. As we know that they disagree on the last committee, there must be some committee I where they start disagreeing. So here in our example, I'm using colors to show agreement and disagreement. And we can see that at C3, they both agree and at C4, they start disagreeing. Now, Bob can simply ask both the provers to present signatures from C3, the agreeing committee, to C4, the disagreeing committee. And only one of them should be able to present enough valid signatures. And this allows Bob to distinguish between the honest and the dishonest viewer. The communication complexity of this construction is the hash size times the number of sync periods plus the Merkle proof size. This brings us to the core part of the presentation where we're gonna build super light clan construction, which is gonna be exponentially better than the light client as well as the straw man construction. So in the straw man construction, we saw that we first linearly, you know, found the first point of disagreement and then did a quick check on which of them is honest. So a natural question to ask here would be, can we find this first point of disagreement efficiently? For this, Bob asks both the provers to generate a Merkle tree. And the leaf of this Merkle tree is the committee hashes. Now, Bob can simply ask both the provers to present the root of the tree. As we know they disagree, the roots must also be different. Now, Bob will ask both of the provers to present the children of the root. Bob will first check the left child and then the right child. So here in our example, the left child is the same. So it will ask, the provers to present the children of the right child and so on. And once we reach the leaf, as, the, as in our example here, the left leaf is already different. We know that this is the first point of disagreement. A very nice way to visualize this is to think about it as zooming. You start with a very blurry picture and then you zoom in at the left side and, the, and then the right side. And you keep zooming until you find that one pixel where you know the two things start differing. And once you have found the first point of disagreement, you can use the same trick as a straw man construction where you ask both the provers to present the previous committee and the signatures from the previous committee. So the uh, committee of agreement to the committee of disagreement. 
the communication complexity between the prover and the verifier here is proportional to the depth of the tree, which is log of the number of committees. So the overall complexity of the super light client construction is poly log of the number of sync periods plus the Merkle crew size. So here we only talked about the case where we have two provers, but this construction can be easily extended to multi prover case by performing this game between two provers again and again. And in the end, a set of honest provers will win. So far, I've talked particularly for the case of Ethereum, but the construction can be applied to any proof of stake protocol. And we have a way to verify the, we have a proof of the proof of stake protocol in a sublinear complexity. That's why our paper's title is proofs of proof of stake in sublinear complexity. Not only did we propose this theoretical construction, but we actually built the construction out as an open source tool to protect existing user's wallet. This tool is called Kevlar and Kevlar connects to multiple RPC providers to efficiently sync to the latest state of the chain. And then Bob can simply use its everyday wallet such as Metamask, connect to Kevlar, which starts a local RPC server. And now every query that Bob makes is verified using Kevlar. So as long as one RPC provider is honest, Kevlar will make sure that the wallet gets the right data. I have a small demo video to show this. So installing Kevlar is very simple. And then you run it. It syncs very quickly and it starts a local RPC server. You can take the local RPC server and replace it in your, it's here we're taking MetaMask, but you can use any RPC based wallet. So currently most of the Ethereum wallets use uh, some kind of RPC provider. You can replace it with the local RPC URL. There is no change in the UX at all. You're going to use the same wallet, but now it's going to be a super light plan. You can see that it's syncing and receiving new block headers. And that's it. It's that's very simple. No change in UX. And now your wallet is secure. Um, so this brings us to the last part of the presentation. Uh, we also extensively benchmarked our construction with real network condition and Ethereum-like chain for chain sizes up to 30 years. And we can see that for a chain size of 10 years, a light client construction needs 100 megabytes of download and around 100 seconds to sync, while as a super light client construction only needs 0.5 megabytes of download and eight seconds to sync. This is a 200X improvements uh, in bytes downloaded and 10X improvement in time to sync. Thanks a lot for your time. Uh, please try out Kevlar uh, and contribute to the repository. We also have the paper in the link. Thank you.